what seems to have happened over the last 80 or 90 years is that in the international system, at that level where countries are supposed to work together in order to create outcomes for everybody, uh, competition has become the only altar at which we worship. And then it starts becoming pathological. I would like to see the um, culture of governance worldwide change from fundamentally competitive to fundamentally collaborative. Never in human history has there been a better case, a better argument for collaboration and cooperation as the default mode. It happens, but it's not the default mode. The default mode is competition. There's something in the zeitgeist at the moment um, which perhaps as a result of a tide flowing in the opposite direction is beginning to flow in our direction. So, of course, we're all sick of hearing that there's a rising tide of nationalism in the world at the moment, and there is. And nationalism has its attractions. The people who follow nationalist leaders aren't necessarily stupid. Um, it has its logic. Um, because we live in the age of the internet, ideas tend to travel very quickly and spread very fast. And so because there's a tide flowing in that direction, there's also beginning to be a tide flowing back in the other direction. Human society self-adjusts in the most wonderful way. And so we're trying to remind people that actually it is perfectly possible for leaders to accept today that they have a dual mandate. They're responsible for their own citizens and their own slice of territory and for every man, woman, child and animal on the planet and for every inch of the Earth's surface at the same time. And if you don't like that dual set of responsibilities, then you probably shouldn't be leading. We spent the, uh, the last um, three or four years doing a sort of psychometric analysis of the world's population and discovered that there's a strong 10% of the world's population who absolutely agree with this premise that um, the global challenges, the future of our children and grandchildren is of more moment than our domestic issues most of the time. And that politics should be as much about international problems as about domestic problems. And that we achieve more in the short, medium and long term, locally and globally by collaborating than we do by competing. So that's 760 million, which is a very substantial nation. It would be, if it were a nation, the third largest uh, on the planet after India and China. So um, Madeline, my co-founder, and I are basically granting that virtual nation its sovereign status. So to answer your question, by starting a country. Students are particularly keen to embrace this idea. They like the hopefulness of it. And one of the things that we hear a lot from um, people between the ages of about 14 and 25 um, is that it's very unusual for, the hear, for them to hear anybody talking about the global challenges um, as if it was a fun subject. Madeline and I have a private motto, which is just because this stuff is serious doesn't mean it has to be boring. We need to rediscover the idea that the sincerest form of tolerance is curiosity and to embrace that, because that's where all of the uh, creativity and all the culture in the world comes from, is the the, the embracing of diversity and the mingling of it. If the good country ever has a national anthem, it will be Stir It Up by Bob Marley. The more you stir up cultural opposites and cultural differences, the richer the soup becomes, and it becomes polycultural and psychedelic. <laughs>